Hello, we're at the National Forensic Academy and what we're going to demonstrate now is lifting latent prints with magnetic powder. And the first thing you want to consider is just the substrate that you're working with, whether it's porous or non-porous. And with magnetic powder, you're typically going to use that on a non-porous surface. So what we have are non-porous surfaces with fingerprints on it. How you can tell the difference between porous and non-porous is if you put water on it and it soaks into it, it's going to be porous. If the water just sits on top of it, it's going to be non-porous. So the way we're going to demonstrate it is if you are going to collect DNA afterwards. So you want everything to be clean, sterile, to keep from having contamination and cross-contamination. What I typically carry around with me is just one of these trays. You can put magnetic powder in it. Just make sure that the magnetic powder that you start with is clean magnetic powder, hasn't been used in other places. And with the magnetic wand, the magnetic wand has a magnet in the bottom of it. Whenever you lift it up, the magnet goes up. Whenever it's down, the magnet's down on the bottom. So you can lift it up. Whenever you lift it, it drops it. And whenever it's down, it picks it up. Typically, how you're going to apply it is to usually go in a swirling motion and just go over it without touching the actual magnetic wand to the surface. You don't want to scrape that through. and just apply it till you get good development. It is possible with magnetic powder to develop to the point of, uh, of wiping the print off. So you want to get it to that point and not go any further. And you can also use your, uh, your blowing device to be able to remove the excess powder. And since we're considering it for DNA purposes, you don't want to be able to blow on it and get your DNA on that surface. Okay, prior to lifting the latent print from the surface, you're going to want to photograph it with and without a scale, just to show where the print was recovered from, the orientation it was recovered from prior to lifting it. And whenever you get the tape to lift it, what you would like to do is pull enough tape out so that you do not use any, you don't stop it and leave any marks on the tape before you apply it. And whenever you apply it, do your best not to leave any air bubbles on it and just spread it across the entire surface. Until you get a good seal down and you're ready to lift it. And whenever you're ready to lift it, just pull it in one nice smooth stroke and then apply it to your card. Sometimes whenever people apply it to the card, they will write their initials before applying it to the cards so that their initials are below the tape, just to show where it came from, who lifted it. Uh, other people will go ahead and put it down and put their initials on the tape and on the paper. Uh, whenever you apply it, you want to make sure you don't get any air bubbles coming through it, so you can put it down on the edge of the surface and just work your way through, making sure you don't get any air bubbles. Then just to make it nice and smooth, you can just tear it right on the edge. Sometimes people will, will use scissors to go ahead and cut it. Just make sure you have a nice smooth surface on the edge. And then you want to mark all the information. Typically you want your initials on it. You want to be able to show the date, perhaps the time that you lifted it, and the orientation of where you lifted it from. Typically what you're going to do is put an arrow going up to show which direction it, it, was, it was whenever you lifted it. Say it was on a car door, then you'd have that car door, perhaps a picture of that car door with an arrow going up to show where it was lifted. That can be important for the person that's examining it and also whenever you go to court to show where the print was lifted from.